All right. Uh, hi, everybody, and thanks for joining us uh, today for today's session. Um, so for those of you who have forgotten why you even signed up to be here today, um, we're here to discuss the advantages of being able to build security into your change processes to be able to create a more uh, secure and more agile SAP systems, which we think is a pretty exciting topic. <clears throat> so I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Daniel Clark. And I've been working as the uh, RevTrack Partner Manager for going on two years now. Um, and I also have the job, uh, or should I say pleasure, of facilitating today's session and introducing our two main speakers. So uh, first up, uh, next to me, we have Chris Drake. So Chris Drake is the CTO at RevTrack. Uh, he's been working with us for over 15 years now. And he has experience in being able and helping to create and implement the change processes in some of the world's largest and most complex SAP users. And we've also been working closely with Rob Tyler from Turnkey Consulting as well recently. Um, so Rob is the cybersecurity director uh, at Turnkey in Australia. Uh, and he also has uh, over 15 years of experience in, in uh, being able to um, help create or improve uh, organizations um, security practices. Uh, so today's session um, is broken into three main categories. So first of all, we'll be hearing from Chris Drake about what it is that RevTrack actually does and why a SAP change management tool has even been invited to a security focused event. And then we're going to be opening it up to more of a podcast style Q&A session where I'll be posing some questions to each of our uh, main presenters today, and I'll be asking them to respond to them from each of their own unique perspectives. Uh, and then I will be giving you a bit of a uh, visual demonstration to be able to, I guess, visually represent some of the concepts that we'll be talking about today. And then open, ultimately, we'll open it up to a Q&A session. Um, so without any further ado, I'll hand it over to Chris Drake now. Chris. Thanks, Daniel. So I'm going to give an introduction of uh, RevTrack, uh, what it is we do in the market, how we communicate out to uh, our customers. Um, so firstly, who we are, Revelation Software Concepts is the name of the company. RevTrack is the product and the business line that focuses on SAP change management. Uh, we're founded in 1997 and we're sitting in Melbourne in Australia. So we've been an SAP partner since 2002. We've got over 220 customers. Uh, we focus on SAP change governance, compliance, and where possible automation. And of course, this is very much fitting into DevOps. And we're looking at ourselves these days as actually a platform to deliver SAP DevOps. So globally adopted uh, in APAC, some familiar brands. These are some of the larger organizations. And we find the bigger the problem, the more likely they are to find RevTrack as a suitable solution. Uh, United States. This is probably our main market, actually, despite us being based in APAC, um, really the bigger companies with the bigger problems and therefore the bigger demand for these types of solutions tend to be in the US. Uh, we've also got a good presence in EMEA and globally, um, and we're finding this to be an expanding market, one that's starting to gain a little more traction today. So some of the traditional benefits of RevTrack, and often this is where people speak to me who have been using RevTrack for sometimes decades, um, they understand the typical use cases. So we're here to reduce manual effort, try uh, to implement change delivery continuity, and of course, uh, mitigate risks and accelerate projects. Now, the way we do this, of course, is really fundamentally at transport management. We put process around transports. Uh, we then allow for a change process to be controlled, uh, to be tuned up by the business, have the right people approving things at the right time, and put conditions around how changes can uh, progress. And then, of course, ultimately give fully qualified, fully tested, suitable changes ready for deployment within a release, waterfall, when ready, any type of approach for ultimately delivering them safely into production. So... This is a very involved slide, but it's how we're sort of seeing ourselves fit in the new world. Uh, obviously, the landscape's changing. Cloud is now a new, very common terminology uh, within an SAP landscape. Uh, but at the core of all of these SAP systems is still ABAP. 
Okay, it's a NetWeaver system. These days it's S4, uh, but we're seeing ECC customers plug BTP and other cloud technologies, sometimes even into older solutions. So we're very much talking about three steps to SAP DevOps. Uh, at the bottom, what you're seeing is what I would consider the typical RevTrack value proposition. It's getting that ABAP core under control, putting a rigid yet precise process around how you are delivering change across the landscape, making sure conditions are met before things are progressing to their subsequent environment, and ultimately trying to get all of the problems detected as early as possible. The workflow is based in ABAP, so it's ins inserted and imported into the S4 or ECC systems, and this is where the brain of RevTrack ultimately lives. So that's what we consider the first step to achieving SAP DevOps, is getting a CICD uh, approval workflow uh, for your ABAP change. The second step is now acknowledging that ABAP isn't the only thing in the SAP landscape these days. BTP is obviously the very emerging part of the SAP landscape. And of course, we see things like success factors, Ariba, and even now as we work more into the cloud world, um, dependencies and microservices that might exist on AWS or a hyperscaler, um, these need to be accounted for when it comes to delivering SAP projects and uh, delivering SAP change. So step two is about now plugging in these cloud solutions into your workflow process and making sure you have a unified approach to delivering change across your landscape, making sure that sometimes changes can impact ABAP, BTP, and a little bit of hyperscaler. They should be managed as a unit of work and together so that uh, dependencies and conditions are being met and ultimately consolidated. The third step is where we've had a lot more experience recently actually which is around integration so we want to see best of breed <coughs> alm solutions being brought into the change delivery process so test automation code analysis which we'll discuss today um, document management anything that might impact a change or need to be called we can build it into an enforced process so that ultimately you're experiencing as much automation as possible uh, and getting a unified approach to orchestrating your SAP DevOps. So these are our three steps to SAP DevOps. Step one is get your core under control. Step two, unify your solutions. And step three, orchestrate with best of breed solutions. Here is an example of what we call the DevOps tool chain. So it is becoming a more accepted terminology uh, within the market, but this is the concept of basically having every one of your application lifecycle management tools uh, automatically called and engaged with at the appropriate time. This is an example of what an SAP ABAP tool chain might look like. And here we're seeing, for example, you might start things out in ServiceNow or Sherwell, uh, where the IT help desk has a look at the change, identifies it as SAP, and then delivers the change off to ultimately the <coughs> SAP IT team to resolve the issue or to implement some sort of an enhancement. This is when RevTrex engaged. And in the middle here, you can see it's basically handling the progression of the change and the approvals and the governance, auditing and compliance. Then we're using uh, best of breed tools, so document repositories to make sure that we have the right specifications, the right information upfront as we can progress that change. Um, JIRA, of course, backlog management, timing, assessments of estimates, things like this can be engaged and we can make sure that people are using the right tools at the right time. Automatic code review, Onapsis is one we've got quite a bit of experience with, uh, ABAP test cockpit, we can engage with them at the right time, making sure that we're uh, not allowing changes to progress unless they have met the right uh, thresholds or quality controls that we want to see. Impact analysis, automated testing, these can all be called at the right time and hopefully try and bring the feel of automation as much as possible. I mean, in the ideal world, what you want is a developer to plug in what they have, run an, an analysis with the right tools engaged, you can basically have it ready for production and ready to be applied into the production instance or uh, contained with a release uh, with just a single click. That would be the dream. We're not there, but of course, with the right tools and the right principles in place, you can work towards this. And we believe uh, at RevTrack as the SAP DevOps platform, we're helping organizations to step closer and closer to that dream of automation. That's... Uh, my intro to RevTrack, um, I will now move to the next session, which is, of course, the discussion. So, Daniel. All right. Well, thanks for that overview, Chris. Um, I think you've done a good job being able to squeeze 25 years of product development and innovation into an eight-minute talking slot.
That's right. Um, so uh, I guess that brings us to our next section, uh, as Chris said, um, <clears throat> which is the Q&A session. Uh, so I'll dive straight into it. And uh, Rob, uh, first question is for you. Um, so we've obviously heard a lot about um, uh, change, requir uh, change requirements that are unique to SAP and how RevTrack is helping to modernize that approach. But obviously your focus is primarily on security. So what are you seeing that, uh, what, what are the challenges that you see are specific to the SAP world? Yeah, thanks, Dan. So I guess, um, you know, there, there are a lot of close ties between um, change management and security. So it's first of all, the, the sheer complexity of SAP uh, makes it critical to understand and control change. Um, and that same complexity di dictates also the need to understand security risk. So um, one of the key areas of security risk is custom code, um, particularly at the core, um, as Chris mentioned earlier. So most of that written in AVAT. So uh, in, a, in a recent uh, SORG survey, we learned that um, for about 50% of organisations, their critical custom code is about six years old or older. So we can probably assume that most of that code is you know, somewhat, somewhat older than six years old. Um, and most organisations can probably attest to that. So this would, you know, compare to so non non SAP code, which has typically been developed uh, much more recently. You know, and um, we know that you know um, coding practices um, over the past say six to ten years have certainly improved a lot. You know, at least awareness of, of the need for secure code. So um, yeah, custom code being being one of those key challenges. All right. Um, thanks, Rob. Um, so obviously, updating and modernizing your code base is a very hot topic now uh, in the SAP world. Um, so maybe, Chris, um, what are some of the best practice principles that you're seeing some of our customers adopting right now? Yeah, good question. So within change management, we, we have, and within RevTrap, we have a lot of safety checks that we like to be able to do uh, because we understand that the earlier you can discover an error, the cheaper it is to resolve the error. So if you're discovering things in QA, it becomes a little bit more expensive. You have more people with eyes on the change. You've had more people engaging with it. And then when that rejection happens in QA, ultimately it's, it's more expensive. Now you've got to go back to the developer. There might be time that's passed. That's exponentiated again when you start doing this in pre-production. And then really, if you're, if you're finding these problems in production, this is that's, that's what you're trying to avoid altogether. That can be downtime, outages. And then obviously within the world of security, that's, that's unacceptable. So the key within change management is really find all of the problems in dev. Do it upfront, enforce it if you can, and put some parameters in place so that it's not even possible to allow your developers to be exiting code and progressing code outside of your dev systems unless it's meeting your quality controls and parameters. So the earlier, the better. It's a concept called shifting left, and that's putting as much emphasis on doing the checks and balances with as few eyes as possible, impacting and working on that change before discovering those errors. Um, Rob, do you have anything uh, more to add to that? Yeah, I think, um, I guess I agree with all that. So I guess the other, the other important um, consideration from security is that we need that visibility into into the code as well which from a security perspective so we need to we need to understand what is the security risk of that code that we're that there's a particular concern at the time so this is um, incorporating it in into um, the dev and change process is, is certainly important excellent well i guess the key question now is how, how do we combine the best of both worlds, in a sense, and being able to incorporate SAP security into the change management process? Yeah, well, I guess this is the, really the principle behind DevSecOps, which is mentioned earlier. So, um, and, and this is where we we include security review and checks within that Dev and change process. So, at the at the time of of deploying, we we have a view on on what is the what is the likely risk of that code. So security checks involves and applying tooling that that can understand uh, security or insecure code development practices. Um, now, obviously, this is a, this is an ideal time. Firstly, um, you know the, the the code module in question um, is known, so the criticality of that of that piece of code and the and, and the purpose is 
is known. So that's that's important in terms of assessing risk. Um, also, the, the the code is is, is now quite is now familiar to the developer. So they've either just recently written this or it's recently been updated by the developer. So so, so they understand the code. Um, and one of the other key kind of I guess flow on benefits is that it's it's a very effective way of improving the awareness of secure coding practices. So if the developer is immediately made aware that there's that there's something that's been developed which is which is not necessarily best coding practice from a security perspective, um, it, it's indicated so. So the vulnerability is pointed out, um, and they're, and they're also shown I guess uh, an, an example of how else uh, to you know to, to to write that code in a more secure way. So, you know, it's far more effective um, than perhaps, you know, undertaking security review at a later stage. Um, you know, as Chris mentioned, the, the further down, uh, the further um, down the timeline, uh, the more expensive and harder it is to change. Um, so much easier if, if the developer um, at the time, um, if, which is familiar, is, uh, is reviewing that. You know, the, the the worst case would be someone else trying to review that code later on without the same context. So, um, I guess the, the the other the other consideration is that you know not all code can be resolved at the time, not all security vulnerabilities can be resolved, but that the visibility into that into that security vulnerability and and the risk um, is, is at least understood. It's noted, and there's a plan to to manage that risk. Excellent. Um, I did pick up on a term you used there, which was uh, iterative improvements. Um, so I know this is a really common theme that we're seeing in the change management world as well, Chris. Um, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so where we're working, obviously, right now is digital transformation. Uh, we've got a lot of existing customers and a lot of new customers that will bring in RevTrack because they recognize the challenges associated with going from ECC to S4. S4 is obviously this new code base provided by SAP that's modern. It's meant to be more web-based. It's meant to be using the BTP for its extensibility. And therefore, it's, it's quite a transformative process. It's called a digital transformation a lot of the time. Um, and what we tend to do with organizations is say, get ready for this. There's some good safety, safety checks, sorry, um, code analysis checks that we can do within an ECC environment in preparation for an S4 digital transformation. So you can enforce this behavior uh, for incremental improvements of code uh, as you're preparing for this S4 system to become ready. We, we know that about 40% of the custom code inside of an ECC system is going to be going to S4. Okay, it's the most critical code. It's the, the one that gives uh, businesses competitive advantage. And it's also the code that's most frequently changed. And that's just the reality. Your valuable code needs minor tweaking and adjustments. Now, if you're preparing for that digital transformation and the shift to S4, you can start preparing code modernization prior to even having the S4 systems available by doing the right checks. And what we're encouraging organizations to do is use a threshold of acceptable um, code modernization within each change. This has the approach of then micro adjustments, which are the cheapest way to do this, rather than having a giant project to let's modernize all of our code because we have to get ready for this S4 next week, rather just incrementally add it into the culture of the organization to say, we're going to be improving our code. We're going to get it ready for this S4. This will improve the chances of a successful brownfield implementation. Okay, when that code is ready and already compatible for S4 before that system even becomes available, it makes the job of performing that digital transformation much simpler. Now, the same, the same principles should be applied for security enhancements. If you can do micro adjustments as you're making change to your already existing code, you're really reducing the effort and you're preparing yourself for a more secure future, but also for a more likely transformation. Uh, and that means the onus can be done in small doses and kind of embedded within your day-to-day -day business as usual, rather than having to set up a big, expensive project, which could ultimately fail or just not be achieved in time or be done a little bit, you know, uh, without consideration. So we really like the approach of micro adjustments and, of course, an appreciation that uh, the work can be done beforehand in small doses to ultimately deliver a successful outcome at a later stage. 
Excellent. Thanks. Um, well, we do actually have a, a very, very brief uh, conceptual presentation that I guess uh, demonstrates some of the concepts um, that we've been talking about so far in today's session. Could we get that slide up and we'll just run through, I guess, what we see to be the solution. Um, I'm going to run through, I guess, a diagram we prepared here. This is sort of how uh, RevTrack is engaging developers when it comes to DevOps. Uh, and you can see we try to be as out of the way as possible, but ultimately run checks to make sure that they're um, delivering in accordance with the guiding principles for how an organization wants development done. What we see is just part of the standard dev checks that are being performed, um, we insert security checks. And that's a condition before a transport can be uh, released and before we can then send that into the QA system. So uh, this is our interpretation of uh, DevSecOps and how we can help deliver that. Um, Daniel, I'll hand over to you for the, the process walkthrough. Yes, uh, thanks, Chris. <clears throat> so um, I guess uh, for this, we're creating, a, I guess, a conceptual uh, demonstration of how this process works. Um, we could very well provide a live demonstration straight out of the SAP GUI, uh, but those of you who are familiar with the SAP GUI understand it's not the most visually appealing sort of thing to look at, particularly if you're not a developer. Uh, so we've got a marketing team to put together something uh, a little prettier. Um, so I'm sure we're all familiar with the DevOps uh, infinity loop. Um, so we're going to be particularly focusing on the plan, code, and build stages um, and emphasizing how RevTrack, uh, RevTrack's workflow engine uh, could build security into the development process, uh, even from those very early stages. Um, so to begin with, we're starting out uh, in the plan phase. So obviously, once a business determines that a change is required, it usually starts out in a servicing tool uh, like Snow or Jira or Sherwell. Um, and then it is handed to RevTrack to make sure that it is delivered through a compliant workflow uh, process. So you can see on the screen now, we've got a, uh, a, a very simple, uh, simplified uh, workflow process in stage. Uh, but importantly, you can see that code vulnerability is actually included. Um, in that process uh, before a change can be determined uh, ready for production. <clears throat> um, so looking at the code phase now, so this is really where all the magic happens. Um, so once a uh, change is goes to the status of in progress, the developer will receive a notification uh, letting them know it's their time to shine and asking them to start coding the change that is required. So you can see here, we're working out of an uh, SE80 transaction so that the developer has um, either picked up a bug and fixed it um, and it added the existing code or has created his own um, code as well. But either way, what isn't uh, known to him is it actually contains a lot of vulnerabilities. Um, these are, as I said, these ones that he may have accidentally included himself or they may have actually just picked up some existing code and not actually thought to check to see if it contained vulnerabilities, which is, uh, as I'm probably sure we're all aware, how most developers work. So the developer, believing their work is done, they activate the change, and then they send it to the next step in our workflow process, which is to take it to that uh, code vulnerability in that analysis. So we're moving into code uh, analysis. Um, so uh, one of the tools that we have integrations with runs through the code and it has identified that there is a high impact security issue. So then what RevTrack will do is RevTrack will interpret those results, realize that this is not a safe transport to be able to progress and will instead actually reject it from the stage and send it back to the status of in progress. Uh, we'll automatically notify the developer again, letting them know that there's still work to be done on the change that they're working on. Um, send it back to them with the report so that they are aware of what actually needs to be able to change and where the vulnerabilities exist so that they can address them then and there before we even see it go on into that uh, quality, uh, quality assessment stage. So now the developer does their work, fixes up all the vulnerabilities, uh, activates it again. And this time, once we go through that uh, code vulnerability analysis, um, we get an all green lights and it's a pass, which is the exact response we were looking for. 
Uh, now that we've got that, we can be certain that uh, all of the code that, that we're working on presently is secure, that we're not uh, introducing any, vulner any vulnerabilities into production. And then ultimately, we're able to move to that build stage and so that all the changes that we're building into that release, we know that it's uh, uh, vulnerability free, which is a huge win. So even though that was a very brief presentation, we've been able to achieve quite a few things there. So first of all, uh, we've commenced the change lifestyle via uh, synchronized systems. So regardless of whether the change starts in uh, ServiceNow, Jira, Sherwell, it's been handed to RevTrack to manage the entire change process. And then RevTrack will uh, also automatically keep those systems in sync the entire time. Um, we've enforced a compliant workflow. So this has been pre-configured, pre-approved, and all the right steps are in place uh, so it's in line with the business requirements. Uh, we've also started to adopt a shift left mentality um, so that, that issues can be rectified at the earliest possible stages before they're even introduced into QA. Um, we've engaged the safety checks automatically. So this means that uh, pr only promoting secure code becomes almost like a, an unconscious practice. Um, we've seen some cross-department collaboration. So we're seeing the, I guess, the development team starting to adopt, uh, automatically adopt more of a uh, security mindset. Um, we've seen fast issue resolution. So the issues that were present in that code have been picked up and worked on at the earliest possible time. And then once they were uh, secured, we're seeing a uh, fast, uh, uh, very rapid deployment of those changes into production. So that's just a very, very quick uh, overview. Obviously, once it's in practice, it gets a lot more complex than that. And people like Chris or uh, some of our other uh, consultants uh, and people with Turnkey actively work with our uh, uh, accounts to be able to work with them to uh, find an exact process uh, that suits their needs. So uh, with that being said, um, I will open it up to the, um, the questions phase now of our webinar. So I can see that the questions are uh, being sent through. Uh, the question is, um, how do you uh, how do you differentiate if an ABAP code vulnerability was recently or has been in the SAP system for a while? That's a pretty good question. Um, the vulnerability checks, to my understanding, are being done in the exact moment. Um, so. I don't believe it's something you're going to be able to easily assess um, within the context of change management as to when it was introduced, just the fact that it is there as part of that change. So if you're deploying um, your, your code, you've made a modification and it's picking up old or new vulnerabilities, RevTrack and the code solution at the moment of time in the change management is simply going to give you uh, a binary sort of response. It's there or not there. Now, Rob might speak more specifically to a security vulnerability solution, because my understanding is building it into change management process is one approach, but these solutions are a lot more advanced and vast in their capability. So, Rob, I might hand it off to you. Yeah. So, so, so the simple answer is you, you probably won't know, right, unless the, unless the developer can provide that, that insight. Um, but I guess the, you know, the broader point is that you know, we're iteratively um, addressing security in the code base by when a code has been, um, I guess, updated, a module of code has been updated, then that, that module, um, not just the code that's been written or, or updated, um, the whole module is being is being reviewed. And that way we're iteratively, um, you know, addressing code vulnerabilities. So it probably doesn't really matter um, whether it was just been done at that exact point in time. Um, I guess the key is that, you know, we're, we're starting to work through these uh, security vulnerabilities. Um, and I guess the, the other point is it's, you know, that the, um, secure coding practices shouldn't be a kind of a, a, a name and shame of, uh, of developers, right? We all, we all, we're all kind of creatures of habit. We've been doing coding a certain way um, and it's not until we've had it pointed out to us that there's, that there's a vulnerability and here's an alternative way to do it. Um, so, so this is all about that, that you know, that that learning um, and, and and adapting to new security, secure coding practices. Yeah, absolutely. 
Uh, I mean, what, what you're saying there as well with regards to sort of naming and shaming, we, we, that's, a, that's a really tough thing to sort of, um, you know, have a, have a culture, but it, it needs to be in a culture of an accountability. And I think within change management, you know, everything we're doing in RevTrack, it's a digital signature. Okay. And we, we often tell people, don't sign this unless you're happy to wear the consequences. You know, it's, it's not a matter of naming and shaming, but this is an auditing system. You need to be accountable or aware that there's risks associated. What we're trying to do is make an awareness of the risks. And then ultimately, we still have to give um, individuals the right to understand it and make conscious decisions. Now, whether that vulnerability has been there for a decade and you're really just allowing for it to continue or whether that vulnerability has been introduced today, those are really things you could work it out with version management and all sorts of other fun stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, the idea would be be accountable. And also as an organization, have acceptable thresholds. So if you're gearing up for your S4 digital transformation, we, we might say, you know, two months out, we have zero tolerance, tolerance for any code that is not um, super modernized and has zero security risks. But when you're two years out from your digital transformation, you might have a higher threshold of tolerance. You know, we haven't we haven't plugged this into S4 yet. We're not exposed to cybersecurity as much as we might have been when it was an ECC system that's less web connected. Um, the modernization of the code is not required today because we're still two years out from really cutting over to S4. So I, I think the concept is really understanding the the willingness to have thresholds and where you where you where you are in your project and reduce those acceptable thresholds as you get closer to being at a point where you want to be. Okay. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, I'm just very mindful of time. I think our session has already run over. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone uh, for joining us. Um, this has obviously been a very brief introduction about the DevSecOps solution that RevTrack and Turnkey are, are offering together. Um, so if you would like to know more or start exploring what DevSecOps could look like within your systems, um, I, I do invite you to reach out to either uh, Chris or us at RevTrack or, be, or, or Turnkey directly as well, um, because it, it is an exciting conversation to have. Um, and I think it's one that's becoming very timely uh, in our markets today. So thank you, everyone. Uh, I hope you took something out of this and um, I hope you stick around for the next session and continue to enjoy the uh, uh, session today. Thanks a lot, Rob, for joining us. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Alice.